I bet you didn't know that every iPhone screen you've touched has been made possible by a small company in Japan you probably never heard of. We're gonna dive into that today because it's really fascinating. And I gotta give a shout out to Didi over on X for bringing this to my attention in the first place. Today we're gonna talk about the screen technology on your iPhone. There's this little company that's a subsidiary of Canon called Canon Taki, T-O-K-K-I. Little, I'm not talking about their revenue or anything, just like the size compared to a massive company. And they're basically responsible for the screens that you get that are OLED for your iPhone or your Samsung. That's because they produce the machines that make the OLED screens possible. But here's what's crazy. These machines aren't just big. They're the only game in town when it comes to making OLED displays at such high precision. I feel like reading about this is kind of like when you have a favorite band and then you find out that they're signed to this record label you've never heard of before. These Canon Taki machines, they're the Elves machines. I think that's how you pronounce it, E-L-V-E-S-S. -S. They're like a serious tech marvel. And Canon Taki basically has a near monopoly on the production of the OLED because of them. But these machines can cost over $100 million. What's nuts is they can deposit organic materials at an atomic level, and that's what makes them indispensable for high quality OLED production. So I think this could make you appreciate your iPhone screen all the more. You probably already think it looks amazing, especially on the Pro. These machines blow my mind because they're capable of depositing a layer so thin that it's just 50 atoms thick. Now, because they have like a near monopoly on this tech, does that mean that our innovation is gonna get squashed? You know, like if this one company controls most of this production here? That I don't know. I'm gonna leave that to Apple and all the big tech companies to worry about, right? When they need to make something, then they'll deal with that. These machines are so crazy though, even at that $100 million price tag, they only produce a few annually. And guess what? Something I found out about Canon Taki's equipment, their capabilities, is that, and it's interesting because Apple's working with them, is that it supports flexible OLED. They actually have a lot of information on their website that talks about the future of OLED. So it's kind of crazy to think about Apple's already working with them. You know, we have great OLED tech already, but what could the future be like between these two companies? So you know things like Apple's True Tone? Well, that ties back directly to Apple being able to do that, bring that to your iPhone because of working with Canon Taki here, right? So it's funny, you only see one side of the story. You don't see, you see the sausage, but not how it's made. Now, iPhones have had a pretty similar shape all these years, but it's pretty easy to speculate that with the flexible ability of these phones, we could see the foldable iPhone being developed right now between this partnership between these two companies. You can't have a foldable iPhone if you don't have a display that can actually fold, right? And so that is actually within the realm of possibility with Canon Taki here, and Apple already works with them. This could have to do with the future of AR with Apple too, because Canon Taki's precision could be key in Apple's rumored AR glasses. So this tech would work for micro displays, which would be essential for AR. Apple could leverage their expertise, Canon Taki's, for high res, energy efficient OLEDs. That's one of the benefits, the energy efficiency, and potentially allow for AR experiences from Apple right in your field of view with the clarity and color that Apple users expect. So back to the original thread here, some of the other things that Didi pointed out is like, um, these machines stretch longer than an Olympic swimming pool. And it's funny because each machine can produce about a thousand phone displays per substrate. And so you have like an arms race here, Samsung and LG, they fight over these Taki machines. And there's a wait list that's years long. I think there's a fun entrepreneurial story in here too. So. This company was originally founded, it had to do with like vacuum stuff related to LEDs. But then in the 90s, when OLED kind of was coming down the pipeline, the company bet everything, went all in, and that really paid off, obviously. And then Canon ended up acquiring them. And it's not like there's no competitors, but they just don't offer the same volume. Uh, they can't really compete. Applied Materials is one from the US. ULVAC over in Japan, they kind of can do something similar too, but not at the volume. What's just kind of interesting to think about and remember is like whatever the device is that you're getting from Apple, it isn't just Apple. There's all these little sub components and sub companies and players and contractors. You know, there's a big vast supply chain sitting behind every single product. And it's just kind of fun to learn a little bit more about it. It makes me, I think, appreciate the iPhone a little bit more. You know, you have this technology is sitting in front of you and it's kind of magical, right? But it, the magic wears off after a while, you just get used to it um, and whatever you're around kind of gets boring. But then the more you learn about it, the more the wonder sort of returns a little bit. And I'm just kind of fascinated by the whole manufacturing process and how this is made possible 
for me to have such a great screen in the first place. And I'm excited about what the future could hold in the partnership between these two companies. Let me know your thoughts.